don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, a while ago um, I was talking about watching some videos about the jelly plate um, resist technique for transferring printed images onto a jelly plate and then taking those images off. Normally it's done using pre-printed images from magazines like National Geographic and that kind of stuff. Um, now the videos that I've watched from um, Shannon Green and um, Chelsea were all done using photographs or images taken from glossy mags. And I thought to myself at that time, and I mentioned it in a, a vlog or whatever, um, that I wondered whether or not you could get the same result using laser printed images. And because we have a laser printer here, we ha I had to wait for a week or so um, for replacement cartridges for our laser printer because it ran out, um, which have now arrived, for me to give it a go. So I printed this image off here from the internet. It's a grungy London skyline image to see whether it would work in the same way as the technique that Shannon and Chelsea showed us how to do. And look, um, I got almost a perfect reproduction. The only thing that was missing was um, was the London Eye. So if you kind of place it there, most of it would have been off the side of the jelly plate anyway. Um, and those bits will come off there. But you can see there are the gaps in the actual image there, the scrabbliness around the um, Elizabeth Tower, normally known as Big Ben, but actually it's the bell itself that's Big Ben. The tower is called the Elizabeth Tower, or the Queen's Tower, depending which way you want to, how far back in time you want to go. Um, and then you've got the Tower of London, and then there's um, Tower Bridge, and then St Paul's, and blah blah blah, and the Gherkin, which is the Lord Mayor's office, um, and other buildings as well. So you can see how well they, you can even see bits of the bridge that have come through. I managed to get a crease in my paper, which is why you've got that there. But even the splodges underneath came out. <laughs> and this was just using, as you can see, a piece of printer paper that I'd used the laser print on. So it does work. And this is where it gets interesting. Because it worked for me, I'm now going to have to show you how I did it. So I'm going to take my life in my hands and try and do a live demo exactly trying to reproduce what I've just, what I created myself off camera. So here goes. Now if this goes horribly wrong, then this video probably will never see the light of day. <laughs> um, but if it works, then you'll know that you can do it with laser printed images. If it does work, I will also test it with inkjet printed images. But I don't think that will work because it's not toner. But look, I digress. So for the test, I looked for a really, really, really high contrast image. So I found this and I thought, well, you know, it's a good one. It's a recognizable one. There's no intricate detail to lose like there is in this one. So I thought this would make the perfect candidate for a transfer image. So that's what we're going to try and do today. So I have my gel plate, it's clean. That black you can see is actually on the other side. It's not on this front side. I've cleaned this down as best I possibly can. And I'm going to use Americana um, acrylic paint. So this is the, um, the lamp black or ebony. Um, Americana obviously from DecoArt. So I'm going to put some of that black paint down onto my jelly plate and I have my trusty brayer here. So I'm going to completely cover the gel plate in the black paint and I'm just gently going over the plate to get a nice kind of even coverage of the black paint. 
try not to get any lines in it as best I can. Now it's starting to lift up there for some reason. It might be because today here in the UK is extremely hot and extremely humid. So, right, there's the plate, there's my image. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to lay it down, face down, just like I just said, smooth it on, burnish it on with your fingers to start off with. But what I also like to do is just use the brayer, and just clean off the back and just push it down with the brayer evenly as you can. And it also cleans your brayer for you at the same time. A bit lazy. Now with any luck, when I peel this off, it should leave the image of Lady Liberty on the plate. There she is. Well hello there, Lady Liberty. It's obviously left a bit of other, let's call it scuzz. Yes. Schmutz. <laughs> Big apologies to all those that speak Yiddish. <laughs> So I can just clean a little bit of that off, clean a little bit of that off, maybe a little bit, just a tad there. I'm not going to try and clean it all off. That will do, because I want a bit of grunge in the background anyway. Okay, now, that image has to let, you have to dry it, or you have to leave it to dry. Right. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a hand with my heat tool and just waft it over the top, but I'm not going to go too much because I don't want to dry the gel plate out. But it's silicon, so it shouldn't. But this should take next to no time at all. And it goes matte, doesn't it? It does. In fact, that's it. That's it. That's all you need. So, um, let me get a bit of scratchy paper. Just another sheet, just to make sure I've got my um, brayer cleaned. May I ask a question? Yes. Does it matter what side of the jelly plate you use? Um, if you use one side regularly, use the same side because there may be something to do with the way the paint reacts with the conditioned surface that you've already used. Yeah. Um, if you regularly use both sides of your jelly plate, then I don't really think it matters. No. But if there's one side of your jelly plate that you hardly ever use, don't use that one. Yeah, so it's not conditioned really. I don't think so. I, it might not have anything to do with that at all. It might be complete rubbish that I've just told you, but you never know. use the side that you normally use. Okay, so I think for this, let's do a bit of a blue sky. Yes? Yes. So let's just drop some blue. Blue sky smiling at me. Yeah, let's do a little bit of blue there. Uh, maybe introduce a tad of green, because, you know, why not? It's a nice colour. Yes. What paints are these? These are the Americana, Americana paints. So that was Pistachio Mist, and that light blue one that I used was Indian Turquoise. Thank you for reminding me. <clears throat> so we're going to just genuinely interested. Yeah. So I'm just going to now cover the whole thing. Go over the whole lot with the paint. This is all new to me. Well, it's new to me as well. This is a technique that I've only just kind of discovered. Ah. Um, from our old friend Shannon Green ah. and another one, another lady called Shell C from the Paper Octilo Studio. Going to dry, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so that should do it. And then I'm going to place my paper over the top. The ordinary photocopy. Just paper. ordinary printer, photocopier paper. It's, you know, not thick, not thin, just the bog standard ordinary weight that you would use right. for printing out a letter to the bank. And I'm just going to go do exactly the same thing again, just go over the top, just burnish it a little bit. Move it back into the middle now, can't I? I've got it on a um, non-stick craft mat and it's sliding. Sliding. And 
I reckons that should do us. Lay moment of truth. What do you reckon? And the anticipation. The anticipation is killing you. Oh, that looks good. I'll just turn it round so you can see. Wow. And then you just dry it as normal. Exactly, and then you can use that in your art journal pages. You can embellish it further, add in splatters or whatever, a bit of writing on it, to your heart's content. So, ladies and gents, it does work with laser printed images, providing that you can do them at the highest contrast possible. Could you also, you know when you put your paint on, could you yes. also use a cocktail stick or a, a toothpick and put spirals in it? And absolutely, it? absolutely. You could you could mark, make to your heart's content. Oh wow. This. Absolutely. Well I'm impressed with it. Well, I just lot. I just wanted to do that just as a as a, a bit of a That's cool. Um, a, a, a tester, just to see whether it would work with the laser printed images. It's very Banksy. Yes, it is very Banksy, isn't it? And I kind of like the fact that there's that blacky, black grunge, grunge kind yeah. of in the background. And I'm glad that I did clean off some of it off. So there you go. It does work. So the thing to do now is to, I will privately test whether the inkjet does ones the does the same thing. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know. So that was the one that I did with the London skyline. And there you saw me do Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty. So yes, that opens up a whole new avenue of, um, of of things in which to play with, doesn't it? It does. So I'll be back in a few minutes once I've tested the inkjet. Okay, I'm just recording this just in case it does actually work. Um, if it does work, I'll include it into the, the video. If it doesn't work... You'll never see it. Well, I won't. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just tell them at the end that it doesn't work. So... Right, so, same as before. Exactly the same process as before. So, black paint down, inkjet printed image this time. Could you use any colour paint? It, the, the darker the better, obviously, because... Um, because you want it to show through. If you wanted to do a dark background with white paint, yes, yes. It, it would work. You have to have the contrast, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you did like light blue and then did like a light green background, you wouldn't really get a, a decent kind of image. I don't think, anyway. Right, I think that's burnished enough for us to be able to tell whether or not it's worked, it's worked or not. I personally think because the inks work differently, that it doesn't work. No, it's not plastic, is it? No, there you go. There's no resist because it's it's, it's water-based ink. There you go. I might just leave that in the video. In fact, I am going to leave that in the video. So there you go. There's absolutely no resist whatsoever with inkjet print. Trey's disappointment. <laughs> so, um, if you have a copy shop, somewhere that will do photocopying for you, um, or you know anywhere like that. And you, do, and you don't have a laser printer at home, then you can actually just take an image down and get them to um, copy it on a Xerox foil or whatever, whatever make it is. Um, but there you go, let's get rid of that inkjet one, bring the laser one back in. And I'll bring that other laser one in that I did as a tester to start off with. Um, so yeah, so if you can get laser printed stuff or just want to use magazine images, go for high contrast, high, you know, black and white images, or ones that have got a lot of contrast to them. Um, and it will work better than the ones that don't, pretty much. So I hope you've enjoyed that little experimentation with the jelly plate. Um, and I'm sure, now that I know how it works, I'll probably be using it a bit more in the future. So that's all from me for now. Um, like I said, if you've enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, um, then you ought to for more videos like this one. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.